In today's lesson, I'd like to talk to you about one of the most critical things that a project manager has to manage. And no, it's not the critical path, although that is important. I'm actually talking about managing your meetings or meeting management. You see, I've learned from experience that becoming an excellent meeting manager is essential to moving you from being just a project manager to becoming a successful project manager. And there's a reason why becoming an outstanding meeting manager is crucial to the success of your projects. And I want you to listen close to what I'm about to say because you may read 10 project management books and never hear what I'm going to tell you right now. And it's this. Project meetings are the place where you gain or lose the respect of your team. I want to say that again. Project meetings are the place where you gain or lose the respect of your team. In a nutshell, a project manager's job is to lead and you cannot successfully lead a team that doesn't respect you. And so let's talk about some of the things that you need to do to gain control of your meetings and be well on your way to gaining the respect of your team. The number one step that you need to take in order to become an outstanding meeting manager is to get in the habit of deciding whether a given meeting is actually necessary to begin with. Think carefully about what you're trying to achieve by bringing the team together. Are you planning to exchange information? Are you hoping to make a decision? Is the goal of this meeting to review a document or a set of documents? And ask yourself, can you achieve these actions without having the meeting? Many times that is the case and a better way to manage your time is to help your team accomplish everything they can outside of a meeting and then set up a well-organized weekly or bi-weekly status call where you can discuss everything. Trust me, your team will really appreciate you for not wasting their time. There's nothing more frustrating for a team member than to have to drop what they're doing to attend a meeting where everyone except the meeting organizer understands it wasn't necessary. Speaking of meetings that are not necessary, I have to tell you about an experience that I had early on in my project management career while I was delivering some project work at a major financial institution. I was invited to attend a meeting by a very senior manager at the client's organization and from the meeting invite itself, it was basically impossible to know what it was that he hoped to achieve at this meeting. It was scheduled for one hour in his office and so a group of us who were invited arrived, we took a seat and to our surprise, he began to talk about shoelaces. <laughs> That's right, you heard me right, shoelaces of all things, shoelaces. And so he went on and on about his passion for shoelaces, his shoelace collection, he invited us to get up and come around his desk, which was very beautiful. He had some really nice cabinets and he opened the cabinet doors and to our amazement, he had the most incredible shoelace collection hanging from the doors. There were white ones and brown ones and black ones and pink ones and purple ones, every color you can imagine. And he was describing each one of them and he went on and on and on about this shoelace collection. This lasted for about 40 minutes. For 40 minutes, he went on and on about his shoelace collection. Finally, we sat down and he looked at the time and he said, you know what? Um, there are about 20 minutes left in this meeting and I would like to use the rest of the time to plan our next meeting. <laughs> this is a true story. I tell you without a doubt, this is the most horrible meeting I have ever attended in my entire career. And my point to you is this, as a project manager, whatever you do, do not hold any shoelace meetings. If you see that a meeting is not necessary, have the courage to pull the plug on it before it happens. Okay, moving on to the second step you need to take in pursuing meeting excellence. Now that you've decided that the meeting is necessary, it's time to plan your meeting. I'm not suggesting you spend hours on this. This is a simple exercise, but it is a critical one. Take a few minutes to put your meeting into context so that you can prepare the right content. Think about what has gone on before this meeting, what needs to happen 
during the meeting? What outcomes are you expecting? Are you anticipating any pushback or conflicts? Knowing all these things will allow you to prepare the right content and more importantly, invite the right people, which is crucial to your meeting success. Think about who has pertinent information to what will be discussed. Who has the authority to act on key decisions? Who has the right expertise to review your documents or provide feedback? And have the courage to leave the wrong people out of the meeting. Many times as project managers, we will set up a meeting and someone who really doesn't need to be there will say, hey, add me to your meeting. I'd like to listen in or I need to be there, but I can tell you from experience, do your project team a favor and turn them down. The third step in achieving meeting excellence is to send an appropriate meeting invite to those you've identified in the previous step. Make sure your invite provides an accurate meeting title. Your invite should also include an agenda and a clear description of what you expect to accomplish in the meeting. That eliminates confusion and gives invitees an opportunity to decline or opt out if they see that they're not able to add any value on your agenda or goals. Remember to attach any documents to the invite that you need reviewed prior to the meeting. Next, make sure your invite is sent with sufficient advance notice so that participants have enough time to do any pre-work you need done prior to the meeting. With today's busy schedules, it's not realistic to send a meeting invite with little to no advance notice. And one last thing, be sure to check calendars before you send your invite. I've heard some project managers say that they don't have time to waste on checking calendars before sending invites. They just send them out and let recipients deal with conflicts. But believe me when I say that is not a best practice. You will end up wasting more time rescheduling and repeating things that some didn't get to hear because they weren't there than if you would have just put the work in up front. You can't solve all scheduling conflicts, but do your best to align the calendars of your key participants. Now that you're sure your meeting is necessary, you've done proper planning and you've sent an appropriate invite to the right people you're ready to host and run a successful meeting. But here's where I want to remind you of what we said at the beginning. Remember, project meetings are the place where you gain or lose the respect of your team. So let's discuss how you can now run and control a meeting in a way that will keep your team focused and help you achieve the best results. The fourth step in achieving meeting excellence is to finally run and control your meeting. Let's take a look at a couple of things you definitely want to do in each meeting. First of all, start your meetings on time. I usually wait about two minutes to account for differences in clocks and watches, but be sure to build a reputation for being respectful of other people's time. Second, have the courage to adjourn the meeting if participants have not done their homework. It happens all the time that people show up and start reading a document right there when they should have read it in advance. If one person does it, that's fine, but if you have a room full of people who are speed reading through important information, then they're not ready. Just adjourn and reschedule. This is an important step in you gaining the respect of your team. Believe me, if this happens once or twice, team members will quickly learn that when it comes to your meetings, they need to come prepared. Third, make sure someone is taking notes if not you. And for notes to really serve their full purpose, they need to contain at least five elements the meeting date and time, the meeting participants, what key points were discussed, what action items were assigned, and what decisions, if any, were made. Next, maintain meeting direction based on the agenda. This is why you planned your meeting to begin with. Don't allow others to hijack your agenda by introducing things that have nothing to do with the outcomes you are pursuing. Take unrelated conversations offline and keep everyone moving in one direction. And finally, be sure to publish your meeting minutes immediately. If for some reason you can't do that, don't allow more than one business day to pass before you send them out. If you wait too long, they will lose their effectiveness. And remember, while meeting minutes are a great reference for those who were not present, the bigger value in minutes is that they protect you as the project manager by providing a written record of what was discussed and agreed. Many times in my own career, meeting minutes have allowed me to prove that I gave direction or took direction from a customer on a key project activity. 
Okay, let's take a look at a few things you definitely want to stay away from during meetings. First of all, assert yourself, but don't try to over control things. Again, you planned your meeting so you know exactly what you need to accomplish. Let that humble confidence lead the way. Second, avoid criticizing team members in public. If someone made a mistake, provide your constructive criticism in private. Smashing someone in public can really demoralize a team member and lead to a loss in productivity. Third, do not assign action items to non-attendees. Keep in mind that if someone has not officially accepted an action, it remains yours until it is accepted. The second problem is that because the person wasn't there, the meeting minutes will not show that the person accepted the task, which means you lose the accountability factor. Next, don't force decisions if key inputs are missing. You're better off scheduling a one-off meeting to close that point or rolling that item to the next meeting if it can wait that long. And finally, do everything you can to not allow a meeting to go over its time limit. In the same way that we want to start meetings on time, we want to end meetings on time. And this speaks to the control portion of the run and control your meeting step that we're in. If you have to go longer, do a time check at the scheduled end time and give team members an opportunity to leave if they need to. Build a reputation for being a fierce defender of other people's time. It's one of the best things you can do to gain the respect of others. Okay, let's quickly summarize a few key points from this lesson. Number one, project meetings are the place where you gain or lose the respect of your team. If you think about it, project team members, including you, are very busy working on things throughout the week. So the only place you really see each other is at project meetings. If every time they see you, you're running meetings into the ground or allowing someone else to do so, that's the impression that they're left with time and again, regardless of how hard you may be working when they can't see you. On the flip side, if every time they're with you, you're delivering well-planned meetings, protecting their time, and leading with confidence, that's what they're left with. So work hard to make meetings the best that they can be. Finally, running an effective meeting requires these four things. Number one, decide whether the meeting is necessary to begin with. Two, plan your meeting. Three, send an appropriate meeting invite. And lastly, run and control your meeting like a pro. So put these steps into action and I promise you, you will become an excellent meeting manager and be well positioned to succeed on all your projects. Hey, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and don't forget to come back here to my YouTube channel and let me know how your next meeting goes. I would love to hear from you. If you found this video valuable, I want you to do two things. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. In the days, weeks, and months ahead, I'm gonna be posting some really great project management material and I don't want you to miss it. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.